TTV and so much more. Yo, we about to get started, man. I am feeling kind of tight right now about this, this whole situation. Okay. And this whole longshoreman type of deal. Listen, the bottom line is we need goods and products and all that other type of stuff on a regular basis. Now, a few things to keep in mind with this situation. Number one, this is my opinion and this is my channel. So beyond that, let's get to it. Now, the starting salary, from what I understand, is around $81,000. That's a great starting salary, which makes sense, right? The harder the work is, or I wouldn't even say necessarily hard work, but the more value you add to a corporation or a company, they pay you accordingly. Now, these brothers are asking for what I believe is an unrealistic increase. Now, I'm never for big business, okay? We all, if you have a job, we're all working for companies who are paying you, as they say, J-O-B, just over broke, right? They're paying you just enough to where you don't leave. They're not trying to make you rich. That's not the goal of these companies. Yes, they're making billions of dollars. And most of these corporations, that's how it is. I'm not saying it's right, but that's the reality of the situation. So by them taking this stance, this is putting us all at a disadvantage in an already struggling economy. As it is. And if you haven't heard, Iran just hit Israel. So that's, you know, so add that to the equation. So if there's any backlash or any type of, you know, situation that takes place here. So now you got that. And then you got a strike going on. So now you can't eat. You can't get the basic necessities of life. So the timing is like really off. If you set back this long and waited, why now? Why now? Is the president going to get involved in this? Is Kamala going to get involved in this? That would be good PR, right? For those of y'all who, who think she black and want to vote for her, this would be a good time to actually say something. You know what I mean? But let's get to the video and then we're going to get down to the get down. Let's go. A new development in this story as well when it comes to the port strike. The ILA has told us the number when it comes to a wage increase they are seeking. That number is 61.5%. The president of the ILA speaking exclusively to CNBC earlier today about the negotiations. And I just want to confirm with you, around 61% is what you're looking for. I, I didn't stutter. I said so. Around 61.5. Around 61.5. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Dagan. You have a good day. You do. You have a great day. So again, that was the ILA president saying 61.5% is the number they're seeking. USMX, that's the port operators, they refused to comment on that number. And they said to refer to their statement from yesterday that the two exchange counteroffers, USMX issuing that statement before the deadline saying the two traded counteroffers, then they would offer wage increases of nearly 50% and also uh, add to employer contributions when it came to health care and retirement and also maintain current language when it came to automation and semi-automation, a very contentious issue when it comes to this negotiation, we also spoke to the White House. They didn't want to comment on the wage demands from the ILA, but they did note that the real wages for the East and Gulf Coast port workers have actually declined over the last six years. They also said they wanted to refer to their earlier statement from today, saying in part, President Biden and Vice President Harris are closely monitoring the strike at East Coast and Gulf Coast ports. The president has directed his team to convey his message directly to both sides that they need to be at the table and negotiating in good faith, fairly and quickly. Uh, the White House also maintaining it would not use the Taft-Hartley Act to keep ports open and force negotiations. However, I've been speaking to many industry groups and their leaders. They want the Biden administration to take further action. Many of them saying across a number of industries, I'm talking spirits, auto parts, agricultural apparel, that a strike is going to be devastating for not only consumers, but for their businesses. There you have it. So they're asking for 61 percent so far. The company, well, I guess the port, you know, who's ever in charge of that is saying, you know, maybe 50 percent. Is that not reasonable? And basically, they want them to stop the automation of the port process. Now, I get it because, yes, that means eventually you're going to be out of a job. Absolutely. But that is the way of the world, is it not? I don't necessarily agree with that type of, you know, mentality. Of course, we all need jobs to be able to buy the garbage that's coming up off the truck off the port right but at the same time that is the way things are going so i give them that you know i'll stand on that but is that a realistic demand probably not back to the president 
they're closely monitoring. So you're going to closely watch the demise of an economy and not utilize your ability to overstep and make them come to a conclusion or just oh, by, you know sidestep that altogether. There's too many moving pieces in here for us to be stuck on the fact that they want more money. Yes, I agree. They should get some more money. Why not? You know, I want some more money, too. Everybody needs to pull this stunt at their job and let's see what happens. But at the end of the day, if you don't have food on your table or you're paying fifteen dollars for a loaf of bread, this is a much bigger issue at hand. So the dude that was talking who's head of this, he makes hundreds of thousands a year. So I guess he's standing up for his dues and that's great. But I think they're getting a fair wage. Now, the president said it declined a little bit, but how much are we talking about in a decline? So my theory is this. This is well planned. We have a culmination of events that's taking place in this world at this time. And this is just another piece of the puzzle. So I would advise you make sure you get some food and you get yourself some protection and be ready for whatever is on the horizon. That's my suggestion. Um, again, you know, horrible timing for this. I'm not worried about these big companies. You know, yeah, they can stand to lose some money. But if we're going, if we're going to shut down everything for these people, then I guess maybe it's time for the rest of us to stand up at our jobs and see how that works. You know, because it, it, the reality is the the little three percent or cost of living increase has not actually been substantial to accommodate the cost of living. So the little raise they give you at the job, it is minimal, straight up. And again, I'm not taking away nothing from the fact that these guys work hard and doing what they're doing. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is these negotiations should have been took place. It shouldn't have actually came to a point to where it actually broke down. When you come out now, the original number, I heard a few different numbers as to what they was asking. I heard it was 100% raise. Heard it was 77% raise. Now they the company offered 50% and he wants 61%. So, I mean, 50% raise, who right now would not be happy with a 50% raise on a job? Let's be reasonable. You know what I'm saying? It, it, that would definitely be great. So if you come out making $81,000 and you just got 50% on top of that, I think you're good. I think you're good. So it's extremely important work that they do. I'm not taking that away. But at the same time, let's be realistic. Let's get the country back going, at least so I can eat. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to eat. And that's a problem if I got to pay, you know, $25 for some eggs. And we already just experienced that through this whole COVID situation. We just seen how everything just went. And here we are at election time. Another thing before I go, for those of you who just love Trump, I know y'all heard how he was talking about um, pretty much throwing it out there for us, this purge and how he said, you know, it'd be great, you know, if it was one day, you know, where you can just, you know, take care of all these uh, criminals. You know, that's my horrible impression of Trump. But yeah, did y'all hear that? Now he's speaking to a particular type of person. Okay. Now I'm neither for Kamala or Kamala, whatever you want to call her, Camel or Trump. We have two of the worst possible choices ever, which leads me to understand that this is the illusion of choice. Either way, we're screwed. They put these horrible people in front of us. This is truly picking between the lesser of two evils. It's a practice that we don't employ in no aspects of our life. You've never in your life would decide between two horrible things, bad and worse. You know what I'm saying? That's not an ideal situation to deal with. That's how we know this is all a joke. This is all a game being played on us. The question is, what you going to do about it? Right? What am I going to do about it? That's what it comes down to. So until next time, people, peace and blessings.